Gem is a graphics library for Pure Data Extended. Gem comes bundled with every release of Pure Data Extended, though there are updates between releases of Pure Data Extended. You can find more information at gem.iem.at. In this movie, I'm using Gem 0.92.2. It does have some features that weren't available in previous versions of Gem, uh, most notably the ability to play back uh, compressed video, which I will be using. There are two main aspects to Gem in Pure Data. There's the Gem window, or Gem Win. This is the window where all content in Pure Data is rendered to. And then there are Gem Heads, or Render Chains. These are um, chains that are rendered to the window regardless of the open document. So if you have a bunch of uh, documents open and they have render chains, they'll all be rendered to the single Gem window. We'll deal with the Gem window first. To create this, we'll create an object called Gem Win. Now we'll create two messages. One message to create a window and start rendering in that window, and another to stop rendering it in the window and then to destroy it. So we'll create a message called create, comma, one, create the window, and then start rendering in the window, and zero, comma, destroy. Stop the rendering and then destroy the window. If we click this, create, we see a window. There's no content in the window because we don't have a render chain yet. And so to get rid of the window, we'll click zero, comma, destroy. There are lots of different arguments you can pass to GemWin, and you can access them in the uh, help file for GemWin. One important argument that we'll mention now is Demen, D-I-M-E-N, space, and then the width of the window, space, the height of the window. So in order for this to work, you have to pass this argument before you create the window. So I'll click it, and then choose Create. Now destroy. Now, It'll be saved in the GemWin object, so I don't have to click it again. But if I do open Gem again, I would have to click it. So you'd want to investigate setting up some sort of load bang um, to have this object function. Okay, so now we'll take a look at the render chains in Gem. The render chains are all going to start with this object, Gem Head. There's an inlet to gem head which allows you to, to uh, toggle the rendering for that chain on and off. We'll go ahead and create a toggle, though by default the rendering is on. So this is unnecessary, but it is nice to have that flexibility. So we'll, we're going to toggle it on. So we're going to create a render chain that's going to render a movie um, to the window. The movie we're going to use is an MP4 uh, formatted movie and it is the dimensions of the window. Using these render chains can be a bit cumbersome because you're, you're basically going to connect a series of objects um, together that might not have a really logical connection, but I'll explain as we go along. So the object needed to render a movie is pix underscore film, and in the gem library these objects that have pix underscore as a prefix have to do with images or movies. So I'll connect the gem head to PixFilm. However, I need to make some messages for PixFilm in order to load a movie to PixFilm. To do this, we'll create an open message, open space dollar sign one. And as you might expect, we'll create an open panel. This will let us look on our hard drive for a movie. Okay. Now what we need to do is create a bang for open panel. B and G. And then connect it and bang the open panel. Now actually before we do this, as soon as we load the movie into PixFilm, the second outlet is going to be filled with a list that has the total number of frames in the movie, the width of the movie, and the height of the movie. To get this, we're going to create an unpack, because it is a list, and we're getting floats out of each of the parts of the list. And then we'll create number boxes to take in the data. Okay, so the first outlet of this unpack is the total frames. The second, I believe, is the width. It might be the height, but we'll see 
quickly. Okay, now we'll click Open Panel here and look for it. And then I believe it's called Drive-In. Okay. So now this movie has um, 1118 frames. It's 320 wide by 240 tall. So it makes sense why we had the, uh, um, the demand set that way. We're not yet ready to render it to the movie. What we need to do is we need to have an object that says put this thing in memory, which is Pix Texture. But that's still not enough. Um, by having it in memory, that means then we can actually put it on some sort of, um, think of it like a canvas. So we're going to use a rectangle, and then we're going to type the dimensions, so 6 by 4. And admittedly, this part of gem is a little strange to use. Okay, now, the PixFilm object does not import the audio. You would have to import that separately. It's just the moving images. Okay, it should be ready to go, so we'll create the window. And now what we need to do is we need to set into the input of PixFilm um, a, a message to start and stop the film and to automatically play it. So we'll type auto space dollar sign one. And then we'll use a toggle. So dollar sign one is taking in the one or zero from the toggle, toggle rather, and we'll connect that to the inlet. Okay, let me go to the gem window. We'll move it over here. And now if I toggle on auto, which is autoplay, you see that the movies play. And these are some drive-in uh, movies that I got off of archive.org. These are really nice little movies. Um, now, one of the cool things you could do with PixFilm is use the right inlet and actually play this thing frame by frame. So what I'll do is I'll make a number box and put it into the right inlet. Now I turn off auto and then scroll up and down. And what I'm doing is I'm going through each frame of the movie. I could, if I wanted, use, let's say, an H slider. Set the properties of the H slider so that the um, total output range is the total number of frames, which is 1118. And then connect this to the input and go. Oh, wrong one. That should be the right inlet. And I might have screwed it up. There we go. Okay, and then as you might suspect, since this is just taking um, the frame input to say go to that frame, what do we love to do? We love to create these random number generators. We'll make a metro really fast, a random, and these are ints, not floats, so random between 0 and 118. Okay, and then if I create a toggle, you would expect that this movie would start jumping around in frames. And it would do it really fast. A little bit too fast, so let's slow it down. And that could be pretty cool if you have some sort of um, other part of your patch that's got tempo to it and you want to sync it up and do some um, really simple VJ style stuff. So when we come back, we'll create a movie crossfader using two different movies. And uh, we'll see how we can also do some other cool things with this right inlet. I've taken the initial render chain at the left and I've duplicated it at the right. It is exactly the same. Except now that it has a different movie, we're going to mix between the two render chains. To do this, we'll disconnect the left render chain from Pix Texture and Rectangle and move that down and we'll insert an object called Pix Mix. And then the creation argument is going to be um, a panner argument for the two movies being mixed. So at zero, it'll be all of the left inlet. At one, it'll be all of the middle inlet. So we'll say zero. 
We'll connect now the outlet of the first PIX film to the left inlet and the outlet of the second PIX film to the right inlet or to the middle inlet and then PIX mix to PIX texture. Okay, now we need some sort of control to mix between the two. And for this, I'm gonna use a knob. Right click it and choose properties and make the knob output between zero and one. Take the outlet of the knob and put it into the inlet, uh, the right inlet of PIX mix. And now let's get both of these movies playing. And now if I move the knob, you'll see that we can mix between the two films. Okay, so that gives you a really quick and dirty way to start mixing between movies. And as well, you could create more complex effects by making multiple render chains like this and rendering them on top of each other, making simple compositing. Now, if you wanted to control both movies, uh, without autoplay, then what you would do is you would create some sort of control mechanism like a line maybe, or a metro, put it into the right inlet of each PIX film, and then go through it. Now, autoplay is going to basically play it at the frame rate um, set in the movie. We don't really know that, but if we know the length of the movie and we know the um, total frames, we could figure that out. Right now, we don't know the length of the movie, and we also want to do something a little more creative. So what we're going to do is we'll make a counter, a cup, and we're going to make two moduluses, or moduli, let's say. And so one of them is going to be 1118, and that makes a lot of sense, because that's the total number of frames on the movie on the left, and then the other is going to be 1589. And that's the movie on the right. And as you would expect, we'll connect a metro to the cup and we'll give it a frame rate of 125. Okay, so that's if quarter note equals 60, that's a 16th note. and then make a toggle. Okay, now we'll take the output of each and put it into the right inlet of PIX film. It is a bit messy, but that's okay. And now we'll get a um, definitely a more staggered playback, but it's it's pretty cool. Okay, so you can see it very slow because the Metro is banging at 125. So now if we mix this, we're playing it back slowly. And what we could do here is we could use um, some sort of uh, drunk walk. And let's say uh, we deal with um, a thousand. And what a drunk walk does is it slowly progresses forward, but it inches back also. So it'll produce numbers like um, 50, 51, 52, 50, 49, 51, 52, 53, etc. And you can really imagine why it's called drunk. Okay, and we don't have to put th this through the modulus. Um, why not? We'll do it anyways. It's sloppy, admittedly. But for this purpose, it, it isn't a big deal. So now what's going to happen here is that you're going to get this moving forward and back. And the rate's really slow, so let's really crank it up with this metro. And you can sort of see the splotches um, come in and out. And it, 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 it's really nice because it creates this sort of patterning. This would be really good for uh, faster music. And it allows you just another expressive way to go through this movie instead of just playing it from beginning to end. But anyhow, the uh, PixFilm objects are really nice for displaying uh, movie content that's already recorded. And with this simple Pix mixer, you can begin to do really simple VJ style things if you wanted. Um, 
as well. Gem does offer the ability to record movies, to use your webcam and pictures, and we'll be going over those in other movies.